Eagles mini camps uh, for the rookies in the books over the weekend. We'll take a look back at that. We'll take a look ahead at all things uh, NFL that are about to happen as the next phase of the offseason will continue. John, uh, over the weekend, the rookies made their debut at the NovaCare Center. And if you can kind of give our listeners an overview of some of the things you saw, who stood out, where are some, I know, well, they're wearing shorts and, you know, but uh, obviously some guys uh, look like they've got a better chance than others. You can just see some guys jump off the page sometimes in these type of environments. And I know this is a spot uh, where teams around the league, it seemed like the theme was, hey, you can make an impression here. You know, don't take this for granted. So who are some guys who may have made an impression? Well, I, you know, understand, first off, let me explain that we only got to see uh, about 30 minutes of the first practice. So uh, we didn't get a chance to get a, a good lar- a hard look at these particular players, but certainly – uh, there were guys that you could tell, to me, Matt Collins specifically, uh, just uh, I'll be writing about him, him tomorrow. Uh, he fits the suit, so to speak. I, I mean, he looks like an NFL player. 6'4", 220, runs a 4'5", uh, and he's very easy with his movement skills and you can just see the potential ceiling for him as a player, and I think it jumped off the page. And it's interesting to me because we we talked about the theme uh, of the Eagles draft uh, about being production, and they trumpeted the production of Derek Barnett at Tennessee, of Danelle Pumphrey uh, being the NCAA's all-time league rusher, and Holland is kind of the opposite end of the spectrum, never produced much at North Carolina as a receiver, but he's just spectacular as far as his measurables. And and we'll see uh, if that can translate to the pro level. Um, Yeah, Hollins is a guy that some thought should have gone higher. Uh, Some people really like his big playability. I mean, he was hurt a lot in college, too. I mean, he could be one of those guys uh, that uh, kind of the injuries put him under the radar. Yeah, I mean, that's the Eagles' mentality. They they believe he could have been a second-round pick if he didn't break his collarbone uh, in his senior season at North Carolina. But, hey, let's be honest. He played seven games and caught 16 balls. So that's a little over two per game. It's not like he was jumping off the, the charts before he got hurt. So I think a lot of that is sort of spin. Uh, and he's got a lot to prove. But from an athletic standpoint, it's tough to find anything wrong with him. I, I mean, he's the exact opposite uh, of Denell Pumphrey, who looks like uh, a small guy who's going to have trouble uh, at the NFL level. He looks like the exact opposite. He looks like Randy Moss. Now, I'm not comparing him to that, but that's sort of his frame. Uh, and that's sort of his athleticism. He was the fastest receiver uh, who was 220-plus. Now, he's not Moss fast, but he's very, very fast. He's got that kind of size. He's got the ability to high point the football, win 50-50 balls. But, again, he's got to show it on the field. Yeah, and I know um, a lot of people just look at Mac Hollins. Uh, I guess while we're down that road, we'll, we'll stay on him a little bit here. But uh... – As a special teamer, like that was what he was kind of advertised on draft day. Oh, this guy's a special teams ace. Uh, He's got that, you know, special teams leadership ability. Uh, But maybe there's some more to it. Maybe, I mean, do the Eagles legitimately look at him as, hey, we want you to come in here and give us some, uh, give us some depth at wide receiver. Do you think is that maybe they look at him as an alternative to somebody or a replacement for somebody? Well, they want him to be a receiver. Uh, I mean, Howie Roseman was very, very clear about that. They didn't draft him as a special teams player. And he specifically said you don't draft people in the fourth round just to play special teams. But he also said that's how he's going to get on the field as a rookie. Uh, And he's going to be on all four special teams uh, units, and and that's how he's going to get – on the 46-man roster on game day as a rookie. Long-term, though, 
they want him to be part of this receiving group. Uh, and I think they think he has a chance to be a very, very impactful receiver down the road, mm-hmm. not necessarily uh, this season. But you could see uh, sort of him developing with Alshon Jeffrey as sort of the cornerstones of this receiving group if everything goes well. John, uh, Doug Peterson said on Friday that his message was, I played 14 years and I was an undrafted free agent. Uh, who are some of the undrafted free agents that our listeners and Eagles fans should keep an eye on that have a legitimate shot of making this team? Well, I, I, I wrote about two of them. I wrote about Tyler Orlovsky, the center from your school, West Virginia, Mike, uh, on Fan Rag Sports. And I wrote about Corey Clement at 973ESPN.com. Uh, to me, those are the two guys you should keep an eye on. Orlowski, from a, a talent standpoint, I, I think he's one of the top two or three undrafted free agents uh, in the entire league. And, and the question I wanted to ask him, and I did, is why Philadelphia? Because agents always tell guys who get undrafted, uh, sometimes it's better to be undrafted than be a seventh-round pick because you get to survey the landscape and you get to look at every team and see who needs help at this particular position. Or Orlowski being a natural center, the Eagles have a ton of centers. Uh, and it didn't make much sense uh, for him to sign here. But as he mentioned, and when you talk about Wendell Smallwood, you talk about Rasul Douglas, uh, you talk about Shelton Gibson, that was part of it. The fact that he would come here and be very, very comfortable hmm. and, and would have a number of ex-teammates, that was part of his decision. And also the Eagles' uh, assistant offensive line coach, Eugene Chung, he hit it off with. And that's another reason he chose the Eagles. And I think from his perspective, <laughs> he's like, look, if you put good film uh, and everyone else can see it, you may not you might not get a job in Philadelphia, but you'll get a job somewhere else. And I think that's why he ended up in Philadelphia. Well, I, I know conspiracy theories, uh, you know, uh, Illuminati out there in me would say, how about a, uh, hey, we're looking to move our guy, our starting center. So if you come here, uh, we look at you in that way. I mean, is, is there a possibility that yeah, he was – Yeah, I asked that. Yeah, I – I specifically asked him because the rumors about Jason Kelsey moving on, and that's still a potential uh, and still a significant potential. And I think ultimately that'll decide whether he makes this football team. If Kelsey is moved, he probably will. If he isn't, he probably won't. Uh, But from his standpoint, he says he didn't consider that. Uh, He didn't look at the numbers. He didn't look at the depth chart. He just wanted somewhere he he could be comfortable. And because Smallwood and and Douglas and Gibson are here, uh, this is a place he felt he could feel comfortable. Uh, Talk with John McMullen, 97.3 ESPN.com, covers the Eagles, also covers the NFL nationally for FanRag Sports NFL. Give him a follow on Twitter at JF McMullen. You can uh, check out his piece on Tyler Orlowski, uh, a guy that um, I I had wrote about a couple of weeks ago saying don't be surprised uh, if Kelsey's not here, that he become you know that that he is a guy that that has uh, Dana Holgerson said he was surprised that he was not drafted higher. Now that's his coach, obviously, but uh, you know there's one guy, Corey Clements, another guy you wrote about, and uh, you know he seemed like he was surprised that he was in the situation he was in, but I guess using it as motivation. But um, with the current landscape at running back here, you would have to think that he's got a legitimate shot to make this team and maybe even get playing time as an undrafted rookie. Yeah, and that's sort of like the opposite of Orlowski. Clement looked at the landscape, picked the situation. Now he's also a, a local kid from Glassboro, uh, but picked a situation uh, where the team needed significant running back help. So he's got a real good opportunity. If the Eagles don't bring in another body, uh, a veteran body, and I think they might, if they don't, he, you would almost have to say he's going to make this team huh. uh, unless something drastic happens. That's, I, I mean, they have a need at that position. And not only that, they have a need for his type of back. He's a 220-pound uh, bruising running back, whereas if you look at what's here, 
Darren Sproles, Danelle Pumphrey, obviously tremendously undersized. Even Wendell Smallwood, not the biggest guy in the world. So they need a bigger back, and Clements fits that that mold. So I think he, he kind of looked at the landscape like a traditional undrafted free agent and picked a great spot to have a chance to make this team. But you're right. He was a guy who was rated by most people to be a, a draftable commodity. Uh, he had a bad combine, and all of a sudden – he fell out of the draft, but he 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 fits into that Barnett Pumphrey mold where Joe Douglas talked about production. Yeah. He ran for almost fourteen hundred yards at Wisconsin. And, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, though he he had the injury bug too. I mean, who knows where, where, what numbers he puts up and uh, whether or not he would have been drafted now, maybe a fifth or sixth or seventh round guy. But the injuries uh, played a part in that. Yeah, last year was really the only season uh, he was able to put up those types of numbers. And the, and the year prior, uh, he had significant issues. I, I think from an NFL standpoint, uh, they were more concerned about his straight line speed at the combine because it, it, there's not uh, a lot of explosion. It's not a guy who's going to rip off uh, the 50, 60 yard run. Mm -hmm. So that's always a concern. But for a team uh, that that needs a lot of help at that particular position, he's going to get uh, uh, an opportunity to prove some things, and that's all you can ask for as an undrafted guy. Uh, Russell Douglas, uh, of the players to be drafted, John, uh, you would think that none has a shot to make as big an impact maybe as Douglas does. You would say Barnett maybe – has the talent to make an impact, but who knows how much playing time. Douglas has the least amount of competition, it seems like, to get on the field. You got a chance to see him. He's 6'2", 210 pounds. He led the nation in interceptions. I think that's kind of been downplayed a little bit uh, to show what kind of ball hawk this guy is. He's first team all-conference. Uh, and Peterson talked about what he needed to see from Douglas this weekend. He said, uh, you know, the biggest thing is picking up the terminology and, um, you know, his ball skills and all that kind of stuff. But just seeing he's a big corner, and, I, and I'm interested to see, you know, do you agree that he has the shot of all the rookies maybe to make the biggest impact? Yeah, no question. I've talked about it a number of times. He's the one that needs to hit the ground running, needs to play even more so than Derek Barnett, as you mentioned, the first-round pick, because – you have some depth uh, at defensive end. You don't have any depth at cornerback. So he knows it. We got a chance to talk uh, with him in the locker room as well. Uh, and he knows what the depth chart looks like. He knows he's going to have every opportunity uh, to garner significant playing time early. And he's excited about it. And I, I think a lot of it, uh, depends on his recovery speed as it does so often. Uh, I mean, that was the knock. That's the reason he was a third round pick and he wasn't a first round pick because uh, as far as his size and his length goes, that's he's prototypical as far as what NFL defensive coaches are looking for. And as you mentioned, his ball skills are, are off the charts. So he's got a lot going for him, but he, he's not the fastest guy in the world. I, I said I hate to say it, but he, he you know, he is he's got the build and the and the stature of like Kerry Williams and, and you hope that he's more than what Kerry Williams was. I mean, you draft a guy like Kerry Williams thinking, Hey, look at this guy, he's got size and he doesn't have the greatest speed and that's why uh, you know, he was attractive to teams. Um and, and Russell Douglas has similar size and speed as Kerry Williams, I hate to bring that name up though because it's such a, such a negative connotation. Yeah, I mean, here. you can look. At, you could also say, you know, he's got the. He's a little bit, if anything, he's he's taller than than Kerry, so he's even a little bit longer. Uh, in fact, you know, lengthwise, he's. You could say he's comparable to Richard Sherman. So, you know, and Richard Sherman, by the way, was a fifth round pick. Yeah. Uh, and one of the reasons he fell was because he was regarded as not that fast. So, I, hey, he, I'm not saying he's going to turn into that by any stretch of the imagination, mm -hmm. but that could be the higher uh, ceiling you look at is, 
instead of the guy who kind of failed. You never know how it's going to go. Uh, good point, John McMullen, 97.3 ESPN.com. A couple other uh, things to look at. You wrote a piece about Sidney Jones, and uh, patience is really the game. You got a chance to hear him talk the other day. Uh, he was in town for camp, but he will not get a chance to show his skills, obviously. Uh, but there's a lot of people out there that have high marks for this kid, a lot of big-time comparisons um, the medical staff happy with where he's at, but uh, what what when you heard him talk on Friday, what kind of um, stood out to you uh, about why Sidney Jones was worth the patient, you know, worth having patience with? Well, I, hey, the Eagles will tell you they they had him top ten on their board. That's how good he was, and uh, I I don't know. You, you, there's always a lot of hyperbole, uh, and NFL teams will always tell you. They get the players they wanted, but you know everybody had Sidney Jones highly rated, certainly uh, amongst the top 20 prospects in this draft as a whole, and that's where he would have went uh, if he didn't get injured at his pro day. So to get that kind of talent in the second round, although you have to wait for it, yeah, uh, that's that's terribly exciting. I, I mean, and if everything goes right at the cornerback position. Uh, and and Sidney comes back and is the type of talent we think he is, and Rasul Douglas develops, all of a sudden a significant problem for your team could turn into a strength virtually overnight. Yeah. I know uh, patience was a big word uh, for his press conference the other day, and uh, we'll see. I mean, uh, we no one knows has any idea when he will be able to get on the field and contribute. Uh, we've heard so much about him, but uh, – you know, he, he's the kind of guy that, you know, last year Dallas took uh, – what's his name? Uh, his name's escaping me uh, in the second round. Jalen Smith. Jalen Smith in Jalen. the second round. Right, and it's like when at the time when you take him and when the season goes on, uh, he's almost a forgotten man. And then it's like, wow, you just added this piece that you like had no contribution a year ago. So sometimes things work out like that where even Dallas had a successful year without that player. Think about them now adding that player to a 13-3 and team. Yeah, and even I mean that was a bigger uh, roll of the dice for Dallas than what the Eagles did because he suffered a, a really, really catastrophic injury, and he may never come back. He's still having trouble uh, with what they call drop foot, and he he's got nerve issues in his legs. So a shame. he may never develop in, in, or even play in the NFL. We'll just have to wait and see on that. And in Sydney's case. Uh, he, he wasn't as high, you know, Smith, you're talking about uh, probably a top five talent, so even a higher level. Um, but Sidney Jones has a less impactful injury. Not that it wasn't serious, but lots of people have come back from it. It's, it's much easier to come back from. Uh, physically, he will be the same guy again. So it, it's a little safer uh, gamble for the Eagles than what the Cowboys did, but it's yeah, it's very comparable. Uh, but I, I think there's no question uh, that Sidney Jones is ultimately going to play for the Philadelphia Eagles. That's still a question uh, on Smith and, and the Cowboys. Okay, John, let's uh, look at some NFL news and notes. John McMullen, 97.3 ESPN.com, Fan, FanRag Sports NFL, their national columnist at JF McMullen. Uh, could we see the return of RG3 or Colin Kaepernick in a pretty high-profile spot uh, as, you know, the backup quarterback in Seattle? Pete Carroll said today they're both being considered. Yeah, Pete Carroll didn't get the banned memo, I guess, for the people that think Colin Kaepernick <laughs> has been banned from the NFL. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, that place makes sense for him, and I've always said about uh, as far as Kaepernick because – Look, there's two things you want in a backup quarterback, and, and, and one of them is the fact that if the starter gets hurt, the last thing you, you don't want to do is change your offense. And very few teams play the offense that Colin Kaepernick excels in. One of them that does is the Seattle Seahawks. They use a lot of zone read stuff. Uh, and he could step right in. So it does make a lot of sense from a football perspective to bring in a player like him or RG3 who can run the zone read stuff because Russell already does it. Where if you look at a 
a more traditional pro offense like here in Philadelphia now with Carson Wentz or uh, any other of the pocket-style passers, your Ben Roethlisberger's, your Carson Palmer's, Drew Brees, players like that, you're not going to bring in a guy like Colin Kaepernick. Why? Because, again, if your starter sprains his ankle, you need him for two, three weeks. You don't want to change your entire offense. Uh, so, it, it, you know, but people love a good conspiracy theory. And, and uh, I can guarantee you Colin Kaepernick has not been banned by this league. It's just people view him as a backup. And very few uh, teams now use his system of football. And, right. and Seattle's one of them. Yeah, and I wonder, you know, are you surprised? Like, is there a time of year or, like, at this stage of the year, are you kind of surprised that uh, neither one of them guys is signed or does this, you know, in today's world, like, hey, we'll wait until we get closer to training camp and figure things out? Yeah, I mean, in today's world, May 10th is the key day because, you know, it doesn't count against the compensatory draft pick formula anymore for free agents. So you do see the sort of that second wave of guys, uh, Michael Floyd being a perfect example. Uh, people were going to sign LeGarrette Blunt and, and until the Patriots put the May 9th tender, uh, which is rarely used on him. So you see that sort of second wave. Uh, and then from the player's perspective, it comes down to what they want to do because a lot of times it, from their standpoint, it's better to wait to training camp and sort of wait for a potential injury where there's more of a desperation aspect from a team standpoint. And then you could get a better contract, perhaps with even a chance to start. So it, it comes from both ends. Uh, and it depends a lot on what the player wants to do, if he wants to wait or if he wants to get in and, and compete uh, at this particular time in the offseason. All right, uh, a lot of good NFL stuff. And, of course, uh, the Eagles. When are the Eagles back? What uh, What's their next offseason order of biz? Uh, May 23rd, so a, a week from tomorrow, OTAs uh, start again. We'll get to view the entire – OTA practice, so we'll get to see a little bit more, and obviously the veterans will be there, and the the big story there will be to see if Brandon Graham shows up for the Eagles. Yes, sir, and uh, of course we'll be all over it at 97.3 ESPN.com. Johnny Mack, of course, uh, every day at this time with the look at the NFL news and notes, and uh, follow him on Twitter at J.F. McMullen for all of his Eagles and national NFL coverage from FanRag Sports NFL. John, enjoyed it, pal. Hey, thank you, Mike. 